Live from San Francisco, California, The Cube, covering Mark Logic World 2015. Brought to you by Mark Logic. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Frick and Jeff Kelly. Welcome back, everybody. We're live here on theCUBE at Mark Logic World 2015. I'm Jeff Kelly. I'm with my co-host, Jeff Frick. Hey, Jeff. We've got Jeff and Jeff for this segment. Keeps uh, it easy for the guests. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, speaking of guests, we're joined by Derek Tapp, who is the head of IT solutions at Cabby in yeah. the UK. Hello. Welcome, Derek. Thanks for joining us on theCUBE. Welcome. Uh, so, Cabby, I'm guessing most of our US-based audience won't, won't know what that organization's all about. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Cabby and your role, and then we'll kind of get into some of the things you're doing with Mark Logic and uh, Unstructured Data. Okay, yeah, so Cabby's a non-profit organization. Uh, we aim to improve people's lives through solving problems in an agricultural environment. So, we do things like help um, farmers in developing countries by providing information to them. So, we're all about long-term solutions, so not just a, a point solution, but something that's going to help people over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And your role? Uh, I'm, yeah, so like I said, I'm the head of IT solutions. Yep. So my area is quite a small area, but we work a bit like the glue between what the business needs and what IT can deliver. Mm -hmm. um, so we help with some of the larger scale sort of architectural solutions, mm -hmm. uh, provide technical direction and some expertise around that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have some business analysts and project managers, and we just sort of try and make sure everything fits together. Ah, interesting. So, so tell Put a little color around some of the solutions, if you will, that you're delivering out to the to uh, your, I guess, constituents. Um, what does it look like? Are, are they applications that a farmer might use, or what do they actually look like? There's, there's, a, there's a big range because we we try like our end our end goal is trying to help people like farmers in developing countries. So they, they have very different requirements to what we use for, for some of providing some of our revenue, which helps support our projects, mm -hmm. uh, which is providing information to academics and researchers. Mm -hmm. So tools that you want to provide to researchers, are, yeah, it's a very scientific and very heavy uh, information. Whereas when you go to farmers developing countries, you're going to want a lot less information, a lot less scientific, a lot more practical advice. Mm -hmm. And how we get that out to them is varies by country as well. So some countries have good smartphone penetration, they have good mobile coverage, others don't. Uh, but we still need to reach those people. So in quite a lot of countries we work, it, well one of our programs is called PlantWise. So as part of that, we've been training up a, a network of plant doctors around the world. Now what they do is they'll set up a, a little stall, a, a marketplace or somewhere else central that farmers come to, and they can ask those guys for advice. They can take along samples of their plant they're having problems with, mm -hmm. and that plant doctor will help to diagnose it. Now, we can either try and provide information to those farmers themselves, mm -hmm. or, and this is what is often a better approach at the moment, we just train those plant doctors well. So we're supporting the plant doctors to support the farmers. Mm -hmm. And then when those farmers go back to their communities, they then help support the farmers that they then work with, their families, mm -hmm. and that sort of, it's that knock-on effect. So is it like timing of when to timing of crops, uh, how much water, because we hear yep. actually a lot of big data solutions in agriculture where you know, the driverless tractors are going around yep. more of a developed country, but the, you know how much fertilizer to put, how much water, yeah, so you know, a yield on a particular thing. So you kind of taking that and delivering a little different scale. Yeah, to so, so it's, it's mainly the smallholder farmers we target. Um, so it's practice, practices that make sense to them. Okay. So there's no point saying, you can take this practice if it's something they couldn't possibly do. So it could be something that's incredibly labor intensive without a machine. They can't afford the machine, so don't offer that suge suggestion to them. Okay. So it's looking at what practical information we can give them. So it can be around um, sort of things that would help with the climate. It could be things about using seed, which is more resistant to a disease that's known to be in that area. So it's, it's not a one size fits all. It's, okay. it's, it's what's appropriate to that area. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you're relatively new to Mark Logic, uh, yeah, my yeah. understanding. So we've had a number of customers time, on today that have been, on, have been with right? Mark Logic for a while. Let's talk. This is, you know, with a customer who's fairly new, it's a it's a good opportunity to talk about you know, what was the specific business challenge that you were dealing with that kind of led you to Mark Logic. Kind yeah. of take kind of walk us through that journey. Well, the, the, the one main thing is that Cabby is over 100 years old, so we have a, a, a big variety of data internal to the organization. Some of that we can use very easily, others not so much. But even between the different sort of silos of information we could use easily, trying to merge those together is labor intensive. So we've been doing it as for plant-wise, we had to do that quite a few times. But what we identified is that 
if we could take away some of those hurdles, then we could produce new products easier. So it's more about thinking about how could we use information A with information B rather than saying, oh, have we got time to join those things together? So it's the, that, that ability of Mark Logic to ingest lots of different types of data and, and then minimize the effort to link those things together. So talk about uh, when you were looking for a solution. I mean, obviously, you came to Mark Logic, uh, but I'm wondering, did you look at some of the other NoSQL databases out there? I mean, there's this kind of slew of open source NoSQL yeah. databases. Um, and then you've got you know, more of the traditional databases that are trying to add NoSQL-like capabilities. Yeah. What was it like when you were looking at that landscape and, and how are you, what did you use to kind of evaluate you know, what was the right solution for you? Yeah, well we, we come from a SQL Server background mainly. We, we have a few other database technologies in, inside Cabby, but mainly a SQL Server shop. Um, what we identified fairly quickly is it was a document database uh, flavor of NoSQL that was the, the best match for our use cases. So it was really within that area we put most of our attention. Um, but we were also interested in the graph databases too. So that instantly puts Mark Logic sort of up near the top of the heap as it's got both. Right. But even within just the document side, although I liked some of the open source solutions, I had concerns about like betting the business on those being available for you know, the next five years. And even within short term periods about what well, is a disaster recovery good enough for us. Um, so we, we looked at a, a number of solutions, um, but Mark Logic came out as the, the clear winner. Well, talk about those enterprise grade capabilities. We hear a lot about that from Mark Logic. They kind of market themselves as enterprise NoSQL. Um, thinking of that a little bit more about what were those key quote unquote enterprise grade features that were important to you? Well, the, the two main ones for me is uh, coming from the SQL Server shop, when we first started looking around at some of the open source ones, we were, I wouldn't say disheartened, but it was. It was more of a compromise than we thought we were going to have to make. So it's, we knew we were going to get the flexibility, we get the document model, but we didn't realize up front that we were going to lose things like ACID, which to people growing up with SQL Server, you, just, you, you say get for granted. So we only get that back again, but we're still having the benefits of the, like the document database and having the graph technology in there as well. That was a big plus point for us. Uh, the, the government grade security that Mark Logic is very hot on, to us, is isn't as a big an issue. Like security is important to us, like it is for any organisation. That wasn't like a, it wasn't a killer feature for us. Um, but the being able to reliably recover from any disasters is. We have a, a, a relatively small IT team. We're supporting products which are important to people. We need those to be available. We don't want to have to have our DBA spending you know, weeks trying to manually rebuild a database. We want things to, to work, and when they don't work, to have some realistic. Uh, way of restoring that data. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the, the your use of semantics. We hear a lot about that at the show yeah. today. Uh, and we talked to a number of practitioners, customers that are, are really you know touting the semantic capabilities to bring together data from a lot of different sources. So kind of getting back into the core use case. Um, can you provide a little bit of detail around you know those capabilities and how they're aiding you in, in, in the building applications? Yeah, there's, there's a few things we're sort of looking at in that area. There's, one application we built in the past as part of PlantWise, which we achieved what we needed to via a relational model, but it was hellishly complicated. The, 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 the SQL code to join everything together to get the answer we needed was very, very complicated, very laborious, so lots of places there could be problems. But it works, it does a good job. But looking at if we try to recreate that now using a semantic model, it would be a much, much easier thing to do. Because basically what, what the tool does is say, if you've got this problem on this part of this plant in this country, what could it be? And then we provide sort of some images to help people sort of nail down exactly what it is. And that's just a, a perfect use case for semantics. It's all that's, that's linked to this, linked to that, linked to this. And it's just a, a perfect use case for it. So one of our earliest proof of concepts we did was to replicate that um, in Mark Logic using Sparkle. And as we expected, it was a much easier thing to achieve. Um, going to the future for things that we haven't already got. Um, we track metadata across lots of our um, data silos already, um, but the idea of using semantics to link that together is a really interesting thing for us. So in one of our large subscription products, um, we have a lot of search capability in there, but not so much around browse. And that's something we're looking to improve. And having good quality metadata and the way you can richly link things together will make that a much better experience for people. So we think the semantics could be strong for us in that place as well. So you talked about you know using Mark Logic to build products with the data assets that you already had. Yes. Now that you've been at it for a little while, 
I mean, is this opening up a lot of new opportunities? Do you see a really robust roadmap of places that you can go where you couldn't go before? Yeah, well, we've only just started work on our first four more projects who became customers at the end of January. Okay. Um, where I'm seeing we've got um, really exciting avenues we can look at is by combining what we're doing with Mark Logic with our new API center design. So we're getting into open link data as well. So by having our internal data in a good state and also linking out to other people's data, allowing other people to link to us, is those two things together we think is going to be really valuable for us going into the future. Right, because do you aggregate the data from the small farmers then the feedback to the scientific community? So it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. They get wide data set to do their studies and then you know the data then goes back to the source. Um, yeah, yes and no. Okay. Uh, um, a lot of the, the data we have is sort of it, it is open, it's academic, it's published research papers that we make available to everybody in various different ways. Okay. The data we get back from the plant clinics, so the, the clinics the plant the, the, the plant doctors run, that's sometimes politically sensitive data. So we sign data agreements with those countries about what we can use that data for. Okay. Um, because it could be if we release data saying there is this pest in this country, that could have trade implications which is bad if they've got that pest, but what if that pest wasn't actually there? What if it was a misdiagnosis? There are, there's lots of politics going on there. So from a technology point of view, yes, we can do that. But from a political point of view and our sort of, our responsibility to the countries we work in, it's a little less, less clear than that. Um, what we're hoping to work on is, as, as, as Cabby sort of proves the value of having open data, we're hoping the other countries will see that and then if people like producers and um, traders see which countries are more open about their data, they'll be more willing to trade with those people. Right. Because uh, if you have a country that says, oh, we have no plant pests in our country, then no one will believe that. It's like, okay, that's the official line, but no one's going to believe that. Right. Whereas if another country says, you can see all the problems we've got, that's Right, now, that, that's now apply are. your brain power to help us solve those problems, right? Exactly. So in theory, it should be a nice, yeah. positive spiral. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of complication there, and most of it is nothing to do with the IT side. <laughs> it's, it's politics, politics it's trade, and, yeah. out, outside of my area, most definitely. Right, but it's, right. it's, it's an interesting thing to be on the edge of. And how many, how many countries uh, do you guys work in? Um, we're working in about 70 countries, I'd say. Okay. We, we have member countries who, who sort of help steer our sort of direction. Uh, we have 48 of those, um, but we're actually active in about 70 countries, give wow. or take. So looking forward, I mean, we, we talked to a, a number of customers today that kind of started with Mark Logic around one use case, um, and then have expanded to multiple use cases. To the extent that you can share, I mean, what are you looking forward to in terms of leveraging some of the other capabilities in the platform, um, and really moving forward to kind of your data strategy? But our key focus is just getting a, a central data store. So. Mm -hmm. It won't necessarily be the master for all of our data, but somewhere where we can easily do a combined search across our different sets of data. So that could be stuff we currently hold in relational, could be in documents, could be in Access or Excel or whatever, because it, it can be going back like a decades of some of our data. And it's getting that into a form we can use it. When it's there, that's when we can start flexing the different ways we can use the technology. Uh, but it's building that core data. And that's then you what, can that, kind of build on top of that, building yeah. that foundation. That, that's, that's, that's where the main value for us Very is. Good. So uh, we're short on time, but I, I want to get your impressions of this, this event here. I mean, there's a lot of folks here. Uh, we heard from our last guest that one of the biggest values they get is from hearing stories from other customers, other yes. users. What's kind of uh, excited you that you've heard here today, and what's well, your impressions of the event? Well, I, I do like the event here, because the thing I like about this one, because there is an equivalent in the UK, but this one is more technically focused. There's a lot more detail, but you also get to talk with the people who actually build the product, and that's what I like about being here. Right, that right. you, got, I don't know how many of the Mark engineers are here, but it seems to be wherever you turn, there's one not too far away. So rather than asking people who are maybe they're in sales or support, you're talking to the people who are actually building the product, and hopefully being able to influence that as well. And that's why I find this one very valuable. So. The sessions are great. I like the sessions, but it's the yeah, it's the interaction between the sessions that I actually find yeah. more valuable to us. All right, well, very good. Well, Derek from uh, Cabby, thanks for joining us on the Cube. We appreciate okay. it. Um, and hopefully, we'll see you back here next year at Mark Logic World so. uh, with the Cube. Yeah, uh, so doing thanks good again. work. <laughs> Thank you. So thanks for watching, everybody. Stick around. We'll be back with our next guest here live at Mark Logic World right after this.